the reports have really increased. You know, last year, um, you know, we had you know five dogs either trapped, shot, um, or poisoned uh, through two th the first half of 2014. Um, prior to that, I mean, really, you had you know virtually no or very little sort of wild dog activity or reports of any dog shot. So to go from that to, you know, five dogs shot in six months or trapped in six months um, is a huge increase. I think it's a combination of, you know, there are always wild dogs here, but in very, very low numbers. And I think, yeah, those numbers are slowly breeding up. And I think there is also some immigration going on as well. So wild dogs can travel, you know, hundreds of, of kilometres um, when they really get going. Um, and they're not that far away. So, you know, you're looking at, you know, dogs, you know, in the Hunter Valley or in, you know, um, on the other side of Meriwa. Um, you know, it's nothing for them to, to come into this area. And there is, when you look at the map in New South Wales, there is a big corridor um, which dogs can move through in, that brings them into that GNU landscape. So I think it's a bit of a combination of both of those things. I think it's really important that landholders get proactive in wild dog control. You know, we've seen a, a real increase in wild dog activity um, being reported and seen by landholders. Um, it is of real concern and we don't want to let wild dogs build up, continued numbers to continue to build up and, and increase in, in their impact on, on local farmers. So while you know, dog numbers are still relatively, you know, low. I think farmers, you know, really need to start, um, yeah, getting proactive and keeping a lid on these numbers as much as possible.